Bulgaria had fought on the side of the Central Powers in Great War, so following their defeat, Bulgaria too suffered from harsh treaty settlements. The Treaty of Nuli sur Seine proved to be a severe blow to Bulgaria's military. According to the treaty, the country had no right to organize a conscription-based military and some territory was ceded to her neighbors. The army itself was limited in size to just 20,000 men. Equipping the army with tanks, U-boats, bombers and heavy artillery was strictly prohibited. Although Bulgaria managed to get around some of these prohibitions, but was still unprepared for the outbreak of the Second World War. Rearmament had only begun properly after the Solon Agreement of the 31st of July 1938, although rearming had efficiently begun as early as 1934, when Bulgaria had been looking to buy its first tanks. The first tanks chosen in 1935 were from the Kingdom of Italy, and Bulgaria bought 14 CV333, or as we know it, L333 light tanks, in a secret deal with Ansaldo Fiat. The deal cost 10,770,000 lev, and it was kept secret until the vehicles reached the port of Varna. The only difference to the standard Italian vehicles uh, was the fitting of a single Schwarzloss machine gun in the front, rather than the Italian style of mounting twin machine guns. These vehicles were assigned mostly for training purposes until they were scrapped in April of 1945. In September of 1936, Bulgaria ordered a batch of 8 Vickers Marquis variant B single turret tanks from Great Britain for 35,598,000 lev. These vehicles were normally fitted with the standard 47mm gun, but they were delivered without the weapons fitted as it was intended to domestically fit them with a Maxim machine gun. The delivery included supplies of 2000 armor piercing and 2000 high explosive shells. Delivery was in two batches of four, the first arriving in January of 1938 and the second in July of 1938. Prior to delivery, Bulgarian officials had secretly attended trials of them in Britain in October 1936, keeping it secret as this would have been a violation of their treaty obligations. As with the delivery of the CV-3s tanks from Italy. Delivery of these Vickers tanks was also done discreetly. These vehicles remained in service until the April of 1945 when they were scrapped. In February of 1939, Bulgarian officers witnessed a demonstration of Czechoslovakian light tanks, which impressed them. As a result, they considered purchasing 50 Sh-1 or Vzor 33 tanks and 40 LT-35 tanks. However, in March of 1939, Czechoslovakia was occupied by the Germans. The Škoda and CKD Praga vehicles, which the Bulgarians were interested in, would have to wait as Czech industry was in German hands, delaying Bulgarian rearmament. It is also alleged that there were political reasons prior to the invasion of Czechoslovakia why they wouldn't sell to Bulgaria, but the invasion of Germany had settled the matter. In April of 1939, Bulgarian general Rusi Rusev, sounds like a Russian name, if you're gonna be honest, negotiated a deal in Berlin for 45 million Reichsmarks, worth of arms despite being officially neutral. 
This Brilliant Arms deal included 26 light tanks with the intention of deploying them to the Turkish border. The deal was agreed that June and resulted in a August 1939 deal with... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, I'm just gonna leave the name up here... of Berlin. For 26 captured trophy Czechoslovak tanks costing 65,000 Reismarks each. For a total of 1,965,000 Reichmarks for this part of the arms deal. The deal also included 10,000 high explosive shells and 5,000 armor piercing shells for the Bulgarians. These tanks were supplied fitted with the standard 37.2mm A3 tank gun. 13 of these vehicles were renamed to Lech Tank Škoda Sh35 or in English meaning Light Tank Škoda Sh35L and then transferred to, thereby also forming the 3rd Armored Company under the command of Captain Alexander Basilkov. The 1st Armored Company at the time consisted of the 14 CV-3s and the 2nd Company of the Vickers Mark E's. The three companies formed Bulgaria's only armored battalion. In March of 1940, 40 more LT-35s tanks were requested but the Germans instead offered a quantity of LT-VZ-38 tanks. Those were rejected by the Bulgarians as being too light, so the Germans instead offered 10 Škoda T-11 tanks, which had originally been ordered by the Afghanistan before the outbreak of the Second World War. These tanks were offered to a Bulgaria at a discount price of 945,000 Reichsmarks in mid-1940. They were fitted with the superior model A-8 tank gun, inspected in the factory at Pilsen, then shipped to the Bulgaria between November 1940 and February 1941. By the end of 1940, World War II had spread to the Balkans, and Bulgaria felt it likely that neutrality would be unavailable. In preference to having the Germans occupy their country, it would be better to just voluntarily join the Tripartite Pact, however unenthusiastically. Bulgaria in turn received permission to occupy a portion of southern Yugoslavia, what is today the nation of North Macedonia, and annexed a Bulgarian corridor cutting through the Greek cities of Zanita and Kavala, down the Aegean Sea, giving Bulgaria access to small second coastline. Bulgaria was also awarded two small Aegean islands, Tassos and Samothrace. In early 1941, the Germans agreed to the low-cost sale of 40 captured French R-35 tanks. These were designated BK Renault by the Bulgarians and were not popular with their crews, being considered cramped inside and already borderline obsolescent. Throughout the rest of 1941 and all of 1942, Bulgaria did not receive any of the modern tanks it had envisioned when joining the Axis. In January of 1943, Bulgaria tendered a request to Germany for 212 modern tanks, 54 assault guns and 186 half-tracks, in addition to other military equipment. Germany was now fighting on all fronts and needed all the kit it could produce and counter-offered just 43 Panzer IVs and 25 Stuck III's. The final compromise was for 91 Panzer IVs, 10 Panzer III's, 25 Panzer I's to be used for training and 55 Stuck III's with deliveries to start in February of 1943. Germany also supplied spare FUG-2 and FUG-5 radios so the ex-French R-35s could interoperate with the German-made armor. Not all of even this compromise request was ever delivered. By best account Bulgaria received from Germany 88 Panzer IVs, 10th Panzerkampfwagen 38Ts, 4 Panzer ones for training and 55 Stug trees. Despite the rent from Adolf Hitler demanding from Bulgaria to send a hundred thousand men to the Ukraine, only a handful of soldiers ever went to the Ost Front. Most of the Bulgarian army was used to fight Tito's partisans in occupied Yugoslavia or remained in Bulgaria. The fortunes of Second World War turned against the Axis. The surrender of Romania in August of 1944 created a panic in the Bulgarian army, as the USSR now had a clear path to Bulgaria. On September the 2nd of 1944, the government resigned and by the afternoon on September 5th, Soviet forces had begun to engage Bulgarian units. On 9th of September 1944, a coup government declared war on Germany and requested an armistice with the Allies. 
To indicate new situation, the St. Andrew's Cross marking was replaced by the Soviet Red Star. In December of 1945, a significant number of ex-German armored vehicles were in Bulgaria. 14 Panthers, 102 Panzer IVs, 3 Panzer III's, 7 Panzer 38 tons, 4 Panzer ones, 11 Jagd Panzers, 56 Stug III's, 5 Hutzers and 3 Hummels. There were also still 18 Renault R35 tanks in service, along with a hodgepodge of other and or lighter tanks like the pre-war Czechoslovak tanks and Italian-made CB-33 tankettes, which had started to be withdrawn or relocated to training units with World War II's end in May. Maintenance of the ex-German tanks, meaning adequate spare parts and enough ammunition consumables to allow realistic training, would be a headache for the Bulgarians. By the spring of 1946, for example, the Panthers were especially fickle mechanically, with the Maybach engines needing extraction for major rebuild every 600 miles, and the, I'm again not going to try to pronounce this, suspension needing a regular care. During 1946, the number of usable Panthers fell from 14 to 6, and by the latter part of 1947 only one remained, being used as an experimental tank. The Panther was maybe one of the most extreme examples, but all of the German armor was affected. For example, in comparison to the Soviet T-34s, even the Panzer IVs and Jagd Panzers needed more frequent and more specialized preventative maintenance, including specific viscosity oils and higher octane gasoline. As far as ammunition during the Second World War, the Soviet Union had reverse engineered some of the German AFV calibers, but with the war over and captured vehicles no longer important, this tapered off. Bulgaria had no ability to make the ammo and obviously none was being made in Germany. By 1947, the post-war Bulgarian army held 1 Panther, 57 Panzer IVs, 15 Jagd Panzers, 5 Stug III's, now organized into the 1st Tank Brigade. The Soviet A-3485 is widely regarded as being one of the best tanks of Second World War, setting the mold for what would become the main battle tank concept of the Cold War. During the 1950s and early 1960s, it was still a respected tank worldwide. The Soviet Army transferred two T-34s to Bulgarians in late 1945, why only two were transferred is uncertain. During the late 1940s, T-34s began to be delivered in unit-sized quantities, with deliveries continuing into the 1950s. During mid-1955, the T-34 was briefly the lone tank type in Bulgarian service, with T-54-55 units beginning to form later that year. Because Bulgaria's army was so small, it was the only Warsaw Pact member to have no dedicated tank division. Instead, T-34s were organized into five brigades. Each mod rifle division in the Bulgarian army also had an organic tank regiment. Throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s, the new T-54-55s began to replace Second World War T-34s, in frontline units. This was not altogether completed until the 1970s, and even with this, some of the Tier 34s lingered on. In June of 1989, two of the Bulgarian Army's four emergency reservist COLA battalions were still equipped with the Tier 34s, the other two having already moved to T 5455s, as they themselves were replaced by T 72s. It would have taken about half a month to mobilize these battalions. This was in line with other Warsaw Pact members, which retained some of the T-34s in low capability reserve units and was better than neighboring Romania, where no one active duty division was still equipped with World War II T-34s in January 1990. All in all, it turns out that the Bulgaria was a really interesting country in Second World War, creating a strange blend of military with the equipment from the west and from the east, something that Yugoslavia will do just a few decades later, but more about that in a next episode.